here we go. All right, 2016 Mustang GT350, RTR, Coyote, Roush, Boost, whatever. Who knows? It's going through auction now, so we'll watch it and see what it does and maybe leave with it. Thinking this could be in my budget, a 2017 Grand Sport with 12,000 miles. We are in this money price range, so let's see if we can get this. All right, there we go. Let's get on it. It's wonderful. All right, Pop, I might have messed up. I bought a BMW convertible sight unseen that has a reconstructed title. All I know is that it does run. I know nothing else about it, and I paid like just just under four grand for it. You're gonna come with me, learn about this car, see if I made a mistake. By the way, you guys all know Papa Al. You know you just got a million views on that video that I posted last week? People loved you. Wow. Wild. Live. Go oh, live. You made it. We're gonna go check out this car. We're gonna find out if we made a mistake, which I kind of feel like I should have. Every once in a while I have to gamble. Sometimes I win, sometimes I lose. Today you're gonna find out with us if we won or lost. My name is Craig, Papa Al from Flying Wheels. Let's get going. So welcome once again to a dealer auction. Sometimes I find some treasures, sometimes I find some duds, sometimes I gamble, sometimes I make calculated bets. Today was a full on gamble, I have no idea what I bought, but it is a 2006 maybe, 2008 maybe, BMW 650 or a 640 CI convertible. Does the top work? I have no idea. Does it blow smoke? Probably it does, but it's right over there. We're gonna go find out if I won or if I lost. Did I buy a dud or did I buy an absolute score? This thing does have a reconstructed title. Previous collision, I'm assuming. We're gonna find out the backstory of that as well. There it is, right over there. Now, number one, I hate the color, but I paid $3,800 for this car. It's a 650i. BMW convertible, under four grand, 110,000 miles. It is a 2006. We have sheet metal screws in the front bump. We have a crack painted bumper right here. So obviously it was in some type of front end collision. It looks like it's sitting really low, but those wheels have to be worth some money, right? Those wheels yeah. alone have some value to it. That dash, oh my goodness. I have never seen a dash with so many cracks. Going down the side, we have carbon fiber covers, carbon fiber side splitter, carbon fiber spoiler, carbon fiber decal. Now you can see that's the original paint. That's the aftermarket like repaint. So somebody painted this whole thing. Pup, why don't you do the honors and see if this thing starts number Number one. I think I see a blend right here actually too. Geez, this thing has a story and I don't even know that I want to know what it is. You know the game, will it start? Put on the brake, push the start button. I was gonna say that's not a good sign, but it did start. It's running, right? It's quiet. Hit the gas, let's see if it's smoking. Does it have a rumble or does it have a misfire? Give it some more gas, good rev. Rev it, hi. Little puff puff there, there's some blue smoke. That's a little bit. I mean, that's marginal for what these cars are. I'd expect more. But look at how the paint is just chipping. That's poor prep. Like somebody sprayed this car and didn't even sand or prep before they resprayed the car. That is wild. Let's see if the top works now. More likely than not, it does not work. Here we go. All right, let's check the inside. Back seats, decent. This seat, decent. Window, works. Oh man, look at, we're missing that pillar. Moment of truth. Does the top work? I don't even know how to use the top, really. Usually we pull the emergency brake. Here it is, right here. Oh, that's a good sign. Hey, we bought a functioning BMW convertible for under $4,000. The top works. Once that's done, now we have to see if it shifts. It sounds pretty good. No check engine light on. What lights do we have on? Oil engine level low. We're missing some buttons here. Who knows what that button does? It's gotta be some type of climate. Does the radio work? I don't even know how to get rid of that. Well, we get some sound, some static. So at least we have audio. I think we might've done okay. What are these in here? Are these steering wheel covers? Carbon fiber steering wheel cover? That go right there? That's funny. No books, does come with a straw. Wedge that right in there. How does a dash get that cracked? Unbelievable. It's on, I guess, right? Well, I guess the next thing to do is drive it and see if it runs. Hey, look at that. We even have the rear window splitter, whatever you call that thing. Big wheels, convertible, runs under $4,000. I think we might have done all right. Here we go. Is this a 4.4 liter? Now, here are all the available models with the same engine. 750i, 750li, 550i, 650ci, 650ci convertible. This is a 4.8 liter. Now, the 640 is a 4.4 liter, isn't it? Correct me if I'm wrong. Tell me. I don't know. She's quiet. It. She's a runner. That's like somebody just did a complete hack job on the paint. Current inspection sticker. That's good too. Oxidized mirrors that somebody painted over. This is a weird one. So far we're doing okay. But 
now we get a try it. I expected worse. Before we take that BMW out of the auction, I wanna show you what else I bought today while I was at the auction, because I scored on this 2013 GMC Sierra Denali, 177,000 miles, 6.2 liter. These trucks are amazing. I paid $6,500, which is an absolute score. And this is what happens when you don't look at vehicles before you buy them, which is what I did. I bought it and someone was sitting here. The driver was sitting here because they drove it through. Look at that seat. How does the seat even get this bad? What's wrong with people? Duct tape on the steering wheel and now it's all sticky. Got a check engine light on, but it's not rusty, which is good. I like those Thule racks. It does need some tires, but I actually have a set of wheels for Denali with good tires that I can put on. Oh man, got a broken tail light and a missing bumper cover. I am the example of what not to do, how not to buy cars at auction. I was bidding on that corner because it was cheap. I raised my hand. No, I still did okay. The price is just stellar, but there are things I didn't see because I just didn't look at it before I bought it. And it's gonna cost me. All right, let's give this old girl a test out. Insert key, foot on brake, hit start button. Oh yeah, she fires. Next thing, break down, put it in drive. Will it move? That is the question. Will it move? Look at it. Button broke, button broke, button missing. I get that things have reconstructed titles. Like it was in an accident, has a salvage history, but it is weird that something with weird histories, all of these things happen as well. What does any of that and this have to do with an accident history? I mean, I haven't even pulled the vehicle history report. I'm assuming accident. It might've been in a flood, might've been, who knows, a freaking plane fell out of the sky and fell on it. We have no clue. We're gonna take it out, see if it runs. Then we'll look up the history after that. Then we're gonna get it back to the shop so we can start going through it and bringing this thing back to life. All right, we're moving. Oh, for Christ's sake, what did I just do? Ran over a Gatorade bottle. Oh, good. I thought that, thought it was a lot worse, but I did get just splashed with Gatorade. Hey, pay attention. I will also tell you, this thing is a terrible design. This stupid thing, that's why it wasn't on there. Okay, let's go, guys. I wanna check the tranny. Oh, we have some get up. At least we have a first gear. All right, let's go straight and see what happens. Ooh, we got a downshift, we get acceleration. We got, all right, I think we might have done okay on this reconstructed titled BMW. Let's get it on the trailer, bring it back home and go through it. We got a top that works. We got an engine that starts. We got a transmission that shifts. We got windows that work. It's just really ugly. Let's get it home. All right, we are loaded up. Yes, I am still loving my Escalade convertible. It gets attention everywhere. It's comfortable, it tows well. We are loaded up on the trailer to get this turd back to my shop. You know, this is a 10 footer. From here, this car looks pretty darn good, actually. Good from far, far from good though, for sure. That would be the theme of this project. All right, let's head back to the shop. I haven't started this thing in like quite some time. Let's see if it starts. Good news, it starts. It is running. Look at that little needle wiggling back and forth. Service engine soon light, that is not good. The good thing, actually perfect segue into this, I have a Bluetooth OBD scanner on my phone thanks to Carly who sponsored today's video, which is awesome. Carly is an OBD2 Bluetooth scanner that hooks into your OBD2 port in your vehicle, connects wirelessly and transmits all your readout to your phone. Do you have to be a mechanic to have it? No, anybody can have it. You wanna know what's wrong with your car? Get your Carly OBD Diag port plug it into your OBD2 port, connect to your phone. It'll tell you what's wrong with it. That way you don't go to your mechanic and get taken advantage of. You know what's wrong for the most part before you even get to your mechanic. It also has diagnostic readouts. It has VAGCOM for Volkswagen products. It's great for BMW. I can program things in my BMW like shutting off the seatbelt chime. I can do all kinds of cool things through my Carly app, which is awesome. Now let's see what's wrong with this car with my Carly app. All right, look at what we have right here. See that right there? That is your OBD2 port. Every car since 1997 has that. 96 and older's OBD1. OBD2, they all have a diagnostic port like that. I can plug my Carly OBD diagnostic tool right there and then connect it to my phone. So let's do that. Okay, so I'm gonna go into my Carly app, BMW 6 Series 2007 E64 convertible gasoline. Now it's going to go through the car and check out everything the car has going wrong with it. Now it's running the diagnostics right now. All right, this isn't good. It says I have PO300 random cylinder misfire detection. Detected. Cylinder four misfire detected. Cylinder eight misfire detected. Oh, and then just a whole heap of other codes. This is not good. So I'm thinking I should replace cylinder four and cylinder eight first. We'll do those coils and plugs first and see if it smooths out. A random cylinder misfire could very much have everything to do with that right there. So they offer a free version and also a 12 month licensed version, which is their upgraded version of their services. Now I love my Carly app. I use it all the time. If you want to get it for yourself, 
you can get 15% off by using code flying wheels. Let's go see if we can figure out what's wrong with this BMW. And thanks for at least giving me a head start as to what's going on with this car. Carly, I appreciate it very much. Let's get on with the video. All right, let's check progress on this misfire. What's going on? I finally got the coil and the plug out and replacing it. And as I was doing that, I found out why it's getting a misfire. Because the plugs and wow. the coil, there's a hold down that holds the coils in and screwed in by that. That one's missing the hold down and the screws. And so is this side for both of them. That could very possibly create a random cylinder misfire or multiple cylinder misfire. All right, I'll grab a couple of those. That's amazing. Thank you for that. So it's my first ride in the BMW. I guess it's an all right ride, even though it's like really an eyesore from my point of view. The other thing is we are literally below empty. So my gas line is under the line of the gas station is 10 minutes from me. So I have to hope I make it to the gas station and grab my son and leave the thing to my son like always. But you know, convertible BMW for $300, not so bad so far. Oh man, I am gambling right now. It's like an episode of Seinfeld. I don't know how far we're gonna make it on that line of empty. By the way, did you guys get my Seinfeld reference or am I too old? We got a spider in it. Get the spider out of here. How do I unlock BMWs? Is it unlocked? It is really nice. It is really nice, isn't it? Is it AMG? Wait, no, this is BMW. Oh, where is this all cracked? <laughs> yeah, look here. Oh, never mind. <laughs> it looks good from 20 feet. Now we have to hope we can make it to the gas station. The dog, go for it. Ah, uh, you lose. BMW update. So it is getting painted front and rear bumpers. We prepped them all. There was like flaking paint all over the place. This car had lots of coatings. We removed the sheet metal screws and drywall screws and we just did, you know, some body filler to straighten it up. We got this adhered so it's on tight. So the bumper is on tight. We prepped the whole thing. Now I'm gonna prime all these spots that we use body filler on and then I'm gonna come back and paint it. So this thing is gonna have fresh paint on both bumpers instead of multiple different coats of paint all over the car, which is gonna be awesome. And then tomorrow I'll give it a wash and show you where we're at on the inside too, because the inside came out pretty mint. Finished product this three coats on it. Good prep makes a huge difference. Remember there were sheet metal screws right there. This is a great finished product. Now here's what I did. Light coat first. I did a single stage paint. I use it a lot on like cheapy cars like this. So I go a light coat first after good, good prep. And then I let it sit for 15 minutes. I let it set. I let it kind of get tacky. I do a second coat that's a little heavier. And then a third coat after 15 minutes. This is a nice heavy wet coat on here. Look at how good that looks. It's consistent. It's not sagging. If you use too much paint, also it will run. So you need to find the balance, which is more just a skill. Like the more you do it, the better you're gonna get at it. So just keep trying and keep trying and eventually you'll get better at it. Now tomorrow we'll unmask this thing and clean it up and it should be ready for sale. I forget if we went through this like mechanically or not, but tomorrow pull this all apart and see what it looks like. Okay, so somebody really just hacked this entire car up. I don't know what they were trying to do with these calipers, but you can see like blue is all chipped off. Like they hand brush it with a coat of blue and and then left it alone. On this side, it's even worse. Like, look at it all in there. So I got some high temp caliper paint. We're just gonna paint them silver because that is ugly. And then we'll do those hubs too. Use some uh, reducer on these center caps to try to clean them up a little bit. Oh yeah, actually they do look great again. Okay, yeah, that looks awesome. And then looking at this wheel, I painted the calipers yesterday. These look like nice wheels, 22s. Look at the gap here. There is half an inch of gap I came from there. I don't know what, Nesson. It looks like Nesso, Nesson. I have no idea, I'd love for you guys to tell me what I'm saying wrong. We could paint him silver, but that's a lot of work. We're just gonna paint him gloss black. We're gonna change him. He's scuffing them down right now with the Scotch bright pads, scoring everything, and we'll prime the metal black, and then we're just gonna paint him gloss so they're nice and shiny again. So here's what they look like now. And while this is in here, a lot of those lights that are on the dash, are like simple service codes, like brake pad low, wear low, which is just a brake pad sensor. So we're gonna replace the brake pad sensor. We have a headlight out, so we're gonna change the headlight. And I think, I mean, unfortunately we're going in the winter. This 
this thing is useless to everybody in my state, but I think this thing is gonna be done like pretty soon. We'll give it a wash, we'll give it a bath, and then it's good to go. The interior came out awesome, and the dash looks great with that rug, carpet, dash pad, whatever you call that. Back seats look good. So the BMW is just about finished aside from a wash. You'll see that we put the center caps back on. I actually went with a matte finish on the wheels. I didn't like the gloss. And then to get these center caps on, we just used a glue gun. We covered the center cap with the glue gun and then put it on the center of the car. So now it's all set. All right, it has been a two month process. I've been completely procrastinating. My mother has always called me a procrastinator. I procrastinated on this car. I just, oh, it's interesting. Like this car was a lot of work. It's like pretty much done, like very presentable. Looks great, wasn't running right. I'm gonna get back to it. I had a bunch of projects going on. I have a $400 into a Ferrari flip car over here, which is my Audi S4. There's my Virginia truck over there, which I haven't had a single call on, which makes me think maybe it's overpriced. I just have a lot of things going on. We have some jet skis we've been working on. My government auction four-wheeler from that sh outdoors show is in there. Let's get back to this BMW. I'm gonna start it off. It's painted, it's clean. Sadly, it's fall and all the cattails from the swamp behind me have blown these fluffies all over my roof. And it's a real pain in the butt. But you can see the bumpers are painted. The front, the rear, the car is clean. The car is polished. The wheels are done. Let's do like a final review of the car. I'm gonna start it up and see what's going on. There we go. I always get that backwards. Going to the inside, the car is clean. Look at, we have our dash pad right here. Now what's cool is that was in the trunk of this car. Why it wasn't in the car, I have no idea. But we found this in the trunk, so I was able to return the one I bought, which saved me like a hundred bucks. That piece was well over a hundred dollars, but now we have like that, whatever you call that, the A pillar trim is back on there. I will say this car is heavy. I mean, it's a good ride, minus the misfire, but it rides pretty well and it's comfortable and it's cool cool looking and it's stylish and it's sporty but classy and luxurious at the same time luxurious 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 at the same time now that i'm driving and moving it kind of feels like that misfire has gone away it was also a quart and a half low on oil too which should have been caught because this car's already been through our shop once before but it was kind of like rushed through because i wanted to get through all the detailing now i'm going to pull over real quick because i want to do a once over of the whole thing to show you what it looks like finished like cosmetically finished does it look good did it look bad? I want to know your opinions too. Like, what do you guys think about this thing? We're also going to take some pictures of it, throw it up for sale to see what we can get. Okay, so you'll see fall is like come and gone. The leaves aren't even on the trees anymore. It is like end of fall. Winter's a month away. That stinks. I should not be owning a convertible going into winter. I know that. I bought this car like end of August, early September thinking like, oh, this is a fun car right now. Sun's out. It's nice and warm. Not anymore. Like, yeah, I'm not wearing a jacket today, but tomorrow I could be in gloves and a hat so it varies every single day i can tell you it is not the time to be selling a car like this although it was a fun project and it's freaking cool looking now here's the car finished cosmetically let's do a full walk around of the car it's starting to drizzle again not conducive to showing off a convertible right now but you'll see we painted the bumpers to match the hood we got the paint codes from the car almost a near match in the sunlight there's a variation now you have to take into consideration this paint oh this is 2006 not even 2000 seven so this paint is 14 15 16 years old yeah 16 year old paint and it fades and it's been painted before so to find an exact match is near impossible this thing has a reconstructed title who knows what happened to it where it was already painted i'm never gonna match it so we just try to get it close so you can see from here very very presentable we also painted the wheels in a satin finish also we painted the calipers in a silver finish and then going down the side i'm kind of a fan of all the carbon fiber i kind of like it it's like like a nice accent. The roof, these little cattails are really bugging me. Back wheel and caliper and hub, like decent looking. I like that. It looks way better than it did. From here, it looks like the paint matches, right? You look up close in the sunlight, not so much. But the rear bumper came out awesome. We did quite a bit of body work to it. I kind of like this. And then like that looks good. There's no more clear coat fading on it. We polished the chrome tips up and the quarter panels are clean as well. Let's go to the inside of this car. Here's why I bought this car. This is a really, really cool looking car for a 2006. It's pretty awesome. It just stinks that it's November and not July because I would be really enjoying this thing. Look at those lines, like all the way from here down. This car is sweet. If only it came in the German 2JZ, a 35i, this car would be even better. I would love it in the turbo inline six instead of that 4.4, which is just a disaster of an engine. It is not puffing smoke like most BMWs. And then this car is finished. Craig, 
Should I have bought this car? No, but you know that I'm a gambler. I take calculated risks. This car could have been an absolute score. It wasn't. I have an auctioneer coming out to list this thing online for other dealers to buy, and we'll see if we can sell it. Am I gonna get my money back? Probably not. Now you can see I have it listed for $8,000 here. I don't remember what I paid for it. We'll go over the numbers later. If it sells at auction, I'm expecting to get like five grand, which is below a break even point, which means I took a loss on it. I kind of just want to get rid of it though, because winter's coming and this thing is going to sit all winter long, taking up retail space. It's going to take up property. It's going to take up real estate in my parking lot. I don't have to move it all winter long. But if I hang on to it for the three months of snow, it will sell for more money come springtime. So now I really don't know what to do. Do I just go for the break even point now, move the money into something else that I can just keep turning for more profit? Or do I hang on to it and make the profit later? So what I'm going to do is run it through the auction to see what we can get. They're coming today. They're doing photos. They're doing full description. So everybody knows exactly what they're getting. And then we know what the high bid is. I'm not going to take a loss. We're too invested into this car to take a loss and there's no reason for it. It seems like it's running okay now. It's clean. It's absolutely a desirable car. Like somebody on a budget is going to love this thing. It's like balling on a budget. So if it doesn't sell for at least like a little bit of a profit, we'll just sell it retail to somebody and make some money on it. Let's go back to shop and see if we can figure out this check engine light. Hey, look at this. Just like my Corvette, you can actually drive while putting the top up. That's kind of neat. And to have a car like this that the top actually works, the navigation actually works, that's surprising. Usually these are the things that break, especially on a car that was originally a beater. It just died on me. Oh, it started. It, this isn't good. Oh, it just died on me again. That's not good. I wish you'd stop beeping at me though. That would be awesome. That does not sound good. I'll tell you what, the beeping is awful. Just cranks and cranks and cranks now. Come on, baby. Oh my goodness, I ran out of gas. I didn't even see the needle because it was being blocked. The steering wheel was too high. I just ran it out of gas. That is completely on me for being an idiot. So everybody knew it was low on fuel but me. They came out running with a gas can to the rescue. I didn't even think to look. But check this out while we're at it. Here's the gas cap, right? BMW has this little pigtail on the end. Right there. How cool is that? Gas cap holder. All right, now that we have some fuel, let's see if this old girl cranks. Most people know this, some people don't. So for the few that don't know this already, I'm gonna help you out. If you're out of fuel, don't just keep cranking and cranking and cranking. The fuel actually lubricates the fuel pump. So if you have no fuel and you just keep cranking, you'll actually burn out your fuel pump. Like there's a good potential of that happening. And not only do you have to replace the fuel and you'll end up replacing a fuel pump all because of a couple gallons of gas that you didn't have. So be careful when doing that. A lot of times with a key car, like this has push to start. With a key car, you can prime it a couple times. So prime the fuel pump, prime the fuel system, and you'll hear the fuel pump kicking on and lubricating itself and filling the system with fuel. I don't know, can you do that with a push to start? Yeah, I guess that's how you would do it. So let's see if it starts now. Ah, she fires right up. That was just a stupid mistake on my part. Okay, it's the next day. That BMW did not sell, unfortunately. I mean, what did I expect? I'm selling it wholesale to other dealers. I'm a dealer. I would be weary buying from me. Why am I not retailing it, right? Why is that car at the auction? So I listed it online. They obviously notated all the paint work. They notated all the issues. They notated the reconstructed history. Highest bid, 3,600 bucks. I'm gonna look in a minute and figure out what we have into this car exactly. The coils and the plugs, they did help. That made a big difference, but it still only got $3,600 as the high bid, which just isn't doable. We have all our time, all our labor, all our shop expenses, all our overhead. I can't just be selling things at losses, especially when I can retail this car. It's almost worth me keeping it to the spring and then selling it for eight grand, 8,500, nine grand at that point because it's just an investment on my money right here. Yes, it'll tie up some real estate, but it's worth making money in three months from now than it is taking a loss right now, right? Or is it best to get my money back and move on with something that will sell 10 times over by then? Let's go figure out what we have into that car. Okay, so I bought it in the beginning of September. I paid $4,250 for it, $85 for the trim. I got to return the a dash mat. I paid $200 for coils and plugs plus recon, plus paint. So I'm into this thing for about $4,700, which means like don't take shop expenses into consideration. I own this car for $4,700 without overhead. I need to make a thousand dollar profit just to break even and cover our nuts, so to speak. So I gotta get 5,800, which doesn't seem realistic on online auctions. I've gotten 36, 38, 34 were my three high bits. I'm not gonna sell it and it's gonna sell at a loss. So my options are sell it as a loss, take the money, roll it into something else, make money on those cars or hang on to it. Maybe someone will 
buy it throughout the winter or I keep it till the spring, which is like at least three more months, four months probably, and then I'll sell it for 8,500. So I'll make three grand, 3,500 in the spring if I just sit on it. I would love to know what you guys would do. But this is a good example of how the dealership works because a lot of my videos are, hey, look at me, look at how much money I made, but that's not always the case. I lost some money on our Hummer, 125 bucks, and I could potentially lose some money in that BMW. No matter what, it's you make more than you lose. That's the idea. So yes, I will lose on some, but you gotta make more than you lose. So win more than you lose. That's the trick. Record scratch, BMW just sold. I was not expecting it to sell before this video even airs, but there it goes right there. That car came out amazing. That is a good looking car. Really nice fella by the name of Leroy bought that car. Thank you, Leroy, I really appreciate it. I'm kind of gonna miss that car. It was awesome, but I'm very happy to see it go because as you can see, my nose is red. It is getting flipping cold out. So it is a great time to get rid of and unload some convertibles. Seven grand, let's go see how we did. Okay, we paid $4,250 for it. We're about $100 into paint. Trim was $85. We had $40 in plugs and $82 in coils. Those covers were $40 as well, the things that hold the ignition coils on. So we own it for a grand total of $4,517 plus our labor. Like we have a lot of labor into that car. But $4,517 is our total amount invested into that vehicle. I just sold it for $7,000, which is a grand total gross profit of $2,483. And the car is gone and I have cashola in my pocket, which is amazing. That car's gone before winter. September, October, end of November, December. So I really didn't have it that long either. I thought I was gonna get stuck with that thing for the winter. What a turn of events because to be honest with you, this video was already edited. It was already finished and I had to re-edit the ending because I didn't think this car was gonna sell at all. That is really, really cool. So you get to see like turn of events, how things actually happen. Thanks for watching. Thumbs ups are always appreciated if you haven't subscribed yet. What's up guys? Subscribe down below. Bell, if you hit the bell, you get notifications every time we make a new video. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Adios.